Good morning all, it's post bag. So this first one I have already had a look at, but this is how it came packaged. So let's have a look what's inside. We have an ESP8266 board. Now this is the ESP201 variant. We have a DHT11, uh, I think this is, a temperature and humidity sensor and then we have this board which has uh, a place for the ESP8266 and a CH340 USB to serial converter and lots of peripheral devices all around the outside and there's one other item in this bag and that is this kind of antenna I mean it's really just a piece of wire but that plugs into the antenna port I can't remember what this connector is again I know people have told me but I've forgotten it plugs into there and presumably will extend the range of this thing now what's nice about the ESP 201 is that it breaks out pretty much every signal from the chip that there is um, including these higher order IO lines uh, 12 13 14 and 15 um, there's also a reset there now if you look at the names down on the top side of the board, they differ slightly from this. Uh, this one calls it IO16, and this is XPD. This one actually says ADC, the analog to digital converter, and this one says T out. Uh, what else have we got? 3.3 volts and ground. There's an IO4, GPIO4. There are three lines here. I don't remember what these are D0, D1, D3. OD2 is up there, and here's our GPIO 0 and 2. Now this is a bit unfortunate, although this row of pins is completely vertical, this one's bent over at quite an angle, so this isn't going to plug directly into the board without me doing some modification with my pliers. Right, that looks a little better, and that does now plug into the three sockets on the um, test board. So let's have a look at what's on this experimenter's board. Um, we have a USB mini here, which goes to the CH340, and it does also supply power to the board. There's a couple of links here to take RX and TX from this USB to serial converter into the ESP8266 module. Uh, this second USB port, which is a micro, appears to be just to supply additional power for the peripherals on the board if they require additional power, and this switch switches on that um, socket. Now we've got a 3.3 volt regulator here to turn 5 volts from the USB into 3.3 for the ESP8266. There's a red, green, blue LED here, and also a white LED down on the board. There's a buzzer here. There's a eight way dip switch here. And if you switch these on, it uh, I've traced some of these tracks through and it links these IO lines through to, and there are some cryptic symbols here, the red, green, blue, and white LEDs. J I think goes to this relay over here, a five volt relay. Um, B, I honestly can't remember. K1 and K2 I think are linked through to these two push button switches. And then in, in addition, there is a pot here, which I think is linked through to ADC, which would make sense, because uh, so you can test the analog to digital converter. And then there's a four pin socket here for the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. So I now have two of these ESP8266 uh, test boards. This one, uh, which came from Alice, is slightly different in that under the module uh, adapter here, there's an STC microcontroller. Uh, I'm told it's um, an 8051 architecture microcontroller, and it seems to be pre-programmed uh, for a specific function involving some kind of Android app, but it's all in Chinese, and it's very difficult to fathom out what it's doing. It is possible by linking these switches in a certain way to kind of bypass this thing and connect the CH340 USB to serial converter directly into the ESP8266 module. Now there are other versions of this adapter board, this interface 
board um, to support the other ESP modules, including the ones with more of the I.O. pins broken out, but you don't get them as standard with this thing. You only get this one. And of course, this has very few pins on it. And so in terms of GPIO, you've only got two, which is GPIO 0 and GPIO 2. This one with the ESP201 module, you get access to pretty much everything. So it's a bit more versatile in that respect. And I'm planning now to do a series of um, Node MCU Lua tutorials based around this module and this board and uh, see if we can get uh, all of these peripherals eventually talking to the module using uh, Lua code. So this is the item on eBay. It's the ESP8266 Serial Wireless Wi-Fi Module Development Board, SDK and all that stuff. £9.99, free postage. And this was from Lieblings Baby. Now, just a little update on this first ESP8266 uh, test board, which I showed in my last post bag. Um, I did receive uh, from Lorcan Adrian. Uh, he very kindly sent me the manual for this, but it's pretty dreadful. So uh, this is it. Um, there are a few photographs of the unit sort of on a table. In fact, in this first photograph, you can see that um, there are three modules here. This is the ESP01. This one is uh, one of the smaller modules, but with more breakout pins, another interface board. And there's another one over here, but you don't get these. You only get the ESP01 module. Now, right, uh, what else have we got? A little bit of a thing on what the parts are. There's a lot of stuff that seems to be taken from the CAD drawings of the PCB layout, explaining or trying to explain how it's all connected. And then down the bottom, there's uh, a little picture of this, which is the Android app, which you can use to switch on. But all it does is switch on the red, green and blue LEDs and control the relay. So it's all very basic and there's no information or very little on how to use it. And this is all in Chinese. And as far as the ESP8266 is concerned, from my point of view, I really want to try and avoid this thing where we have a microcontroller talking to another microcontroller, or even an Arduino talking to the ESP8266. I'm much more interested, quite honestly, in getting programming actually into the microcontroller that is inside the ESP8266. This is in itself a microcontroller. And the Node MCU firmware with the Lua uh, language, the Lua pro programming language and interpreter, for me, looks like the kind of place I want to start working on this. So that's how I'm going to uh, proceed for the moment. Okay, next up we have this, and this I believe is from Banggood. Let's see what it is. White box. So this is quite nice. This is uh, from me.com, mi.com, and it says 10,400 milliamp hours. So you can probably guess, it's a rather nice box actually, you can probably guess that this is a little power bank. And it's a rather nice looking little red power bank. Uh, okay, let's peel that off. So we have uh, an on-off switch, sticky thing there. And some lights, which I think are telling me that it's about half full. Uh, input micro connector, output uh, USB connector. I don't know why these are flashing, and a big 10,400 milliamp hour symbol on the bottom. So I'd quite like to, well, first check the um, capacity of this thing with one of my USB testers, and then probably open it up and uh, see what's in here. My guess is, of course, that it's four 18650 cells, but uh, it'd be nice to actually have a look inside and find out. I think what it's doing actually is flashing the two lights to tell me that this is half charged and it's doing it periodically in order not to use too much power from the actual power bank. Having said that, my theory has just been completely confounded because that came on solidly. Ah, it seems to have switched itself off. Perhaps that's because there's no current being drawn from the output port. You also get this really dinky little uh, flat ribbon cable, silicone coated, 
very nice. So I thought I'd plug it into my ESP826 developers board, 8266, uh, but then it started making a horrible smell and something was getting really hot. And I've traced it to the temperature and humidity sensor, which I had pointing outwards because that seemed logical. But it appears that that wasn't right and it's melted a hole in the back of it. So I may need a new DHT11 sensor. Anyway, it proves that this thing is capable of providing enough power to melt a DHT11 sensor. Awesome. So here's this item on Banggood. Uh, it's the original Xiaomi 5 volt 2 amp, 10,400 milliamp hour power bank. It's 12 pounds and six pence, uh, free shipping. And you've got different colors available. Here are some of the pictures. I think uh, this is the one that uh, Banggood sent to me. There's a little uh, paper manual here, but it's all in Chinese, so I can't uh, really get much from that. But if this thing does contain now 10,400, that would be four times 2,600 milliamp hour, 18,650 cells for, well, just over 12 pounds. That puts them at three pounds each. That seems like a very economic way to be buying 18650 cells. And finally, this one is from Amazon. Let's see what's in here. Well, it's another power bank, uh, external battery pack, 15,000 milliamp hours. This one is from RAV Power and it features iSmart ports. Both of these ports have a little smart chip which can uh, optimize the charging of whatever you plug into here, whether it be a an Apple product or anything else. So thank you for your purchase. Well, this was actually sent to me very kindly by Rav Power. We have a button there, let's press it. Oh, lights, blue lights, lovely. Let's take this out of its bag. Well, this is quite a smart looking, ironically, smart looking uh, device four LEDs here. I guess that's telling me that it's three quarters full. Now in terms of ports, unusually perhaps there's a 2.1 amp and a 2.4 amp. It'd be very interesting to open this thing up and see whether it follows the usual practice um, that actually these are in parallel with each other but just that the signaling type is different uh, to indicate to anything you plug in here how much current it can actually take. I'd be surprised because they're very similar, but why is one 2.1 and the other 2.4? Very interesting. Quite a thick manual here, but it is in several different languages. It looks like there are eight pages of English. That's interesting. And also we've got um, two more of these really quite nice flat uh, USB cables. Um, I think they're both USB to micro. Yes, it would appear they are just different lengths and a really nice bag sort of in a string vest style. Very nice. So this is uh, the model RP PB19. It's 15,000 milliamp hours, 55.5 watt hours. Input is DC 5 volts, 1.5 amps. Output is DC 5 volts, uh, 4.5 amps maximum total, 2.1 and 2.4 on each of the two output ports, which are there. Uh, usual double click to turn on the torch, double click to turn it back off. Now there's no obvious way that this comes apart, and I do want to take this apart because I want to have a look at how these uh, iSmart ports work. I have seen these before and there was a little uh, chip in there, purpose designed for doing this uh, sort of smart USB DCP power that's a dedicated charging port power supply. I just want to see whether this is perhaps the same one or a different one and then perhaps go through the data sheets. But it does look like this might be quite difficult to get inside. Oh well, must be done, I guess. So here's the item on amazon.co.uk. It's the RAV Power 15,000 milliamp hour deluxe external battery pack, third generation portable charger. 4.5 amps dual USB. It's £22.99, free delivery in the UK. 
So that's today's ESP8266 and power bank themed post bag. And now I'm going to have to order myself a brand new DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. Cheerio.